Today I am going to teach you guys three licks that use the Dorian mode and I'm going to explain my thought process behind creating each lick in order to help you better understand how you can play this mode in creative and musical ways. Before we get started though, my name is Ross Campbell from bulletproofguitarplayer.com if you are new here. And just as a disclaimer before we get into today's lesson, this one is, is definitely aimed at more experienced, intermediate and even advanced guitar players. So I am not going to get into, I'm not going to get deep into the theory behind the Dorian mode and where it comes from, the scale construction, anything like that. I'm going into this kind of assuming prior knowledge of, of that subject. And so when you hear me say things like major sixth or minor seven flat five arpeggio or major triad, it's on the assumption that you already know what those things are. So just bear that in mind if you're a lesser experienced player watching this. But if you don't know much about modes or music theory in general, you can learn about those things in great detail in my advanced concepts course, which is linked in the description box below. The curriculum for which encompasses everything guitar players need to know in order to understand, visualize and improvise with the modes of the major scale. And for those of you subscribed to bulletproofguitarplayer.com, go and check the extra section of the site right now and you will find five bonus licks based on this free Dorian lesson, of course with downloadable tab files. Today's video sponsor is once again Neural DSP and today I am using their brand new Soldano SLO 100 plugin, more on that later. All right, so grab your guitar, get yourself a coffee or tea, get comfortable and we're gonna get fired into these three Dorian licks. Here's what the first one sounds like. So for all of these licks, we are in one key, D Dorian. And this one starts out with a triad pair, a pair of G major and F major triads. Now, why do these major triads work in D Dorian? Well, it's quite simple, if you understand what Dorian is and where it comes from, of course. So D Dorian could be viewed as the second mode of the C major scale and the triads built from the fourth and fifth degrees of the C major scale are both major and they are a tone apart, which means on one string, the distance of two frets. So let's look at C major. One, two, three, four. That fourth note there, that's the note F and the triad that would be built when you stack thirds from that note is an F major triad. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth scale degree, that's the note G. Again, if you stack thirds and build a triad from that note, you're left with a major triad. So an F major triad built from the fourth degree and a G major triad built from the fifth degree. And as you can see, there's only two frets separating them. Same triad inversion, two frets between them. Now, when you're looking at that in terms of C major, as I just demonstrated, those triads are built from the fourth and fifth scale degrees. But if you're looking at it as D Dorian, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, then the triads would be built from the third and fourth scale degrees. You've got to remember that if you're gonna try and implement this into different keys. Remember that within the Dorian mode, there's a pair of major triads built from the third and fourth scale degrees that are a tone apart. So in this key, that means F major and G major. So let's look at how this lick starts. So these are my uh, G major and F major triads. I'm just arpeggiating them like so. And there you can see, there's the G major triad. I'm just taking that same triad shape, that same triad inversion, and moving it down two frets for the F major. Now what's particularly cool about the G major triad here, which would be the triad built from the fourth scale degree in Dorian, is that the third of that triad, which is the note B, that is also the, the note that makes Dorian sound Dorian and 
this means the major sixth of D Dorian. So Dorian is a mode with a predominantly minor tonality and so the difference between the natural minor scale and the Dorian mode is the quality of the sixth scale degree in each respective scale. So in the natural minor you have a flat six or a minor sixth, whatever you want to call it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, in Dorian you have a major sixth, that's the only difference. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that major sixth there, that's a part of that major triad that's built from the fourth scale degree. So that was the first half of the lick. Now let's take a closer look at the second half of this lick. So we start out by sliding into that major sixth note that we just talked about. And then the rest of the lick is mostly minor pentatonic based. And I just want to point out to you guys that if you're playing with Dorian, you can combine it with the minor pentatonic scale because Dorian is, as I said earlier, predominantly a minor tonality mode. So it pairs up beautifully with the minor pentatonic scale. Uh, one other thing I want to point out about this part of the lick is just those last two notes I've played. So this here, that would be uh, the ninth or major second, whatever you want to call it, of D Dorian. It's the note E, okay? And that is, of course, within the scale formula for D Dorian. But this note here, that would be a flat nine, and that's not found within Dorian, but I'm implementing it in this lick by picking the note and immediately bending it up a semitone so that it matches the pitch of that ninth. So you're not really hearing that. It's kind of like a, a fake whammy bar effect. It's what I'm going for here, you know, when you pick a certain note, obviously I can't demonstrate it because I don't have a tremolo, but you pick a certain note and then dip the whammy bar and then return it to its resting position so it sounds like this. That's the kind of effect that I'm going for there. Now let's take a look at lick number two. So this one starts out with a funky descending Dorian slash blues scale run. And I say blues scale because this lick incorporates the flat five from the D blues scale, which is this note here. That's the flat five from the D blues scale. And I mentioned earlier that you can pair up the Dorian mode with the minor pentatonic scale. And because of that, because the blues scale is so, so similar, to the minor pentatonic, there's just one additional note, that flat five. You can, of course, throw in that flat five to your Dorian licks as well. And it's, you know, nine times out of, well, 10 times out of 10, it's gonna sound great. So to actually start the lick, we play a tritone double stop. Now, if you don't know what a tritone is, it's another term for a flat five interval or a diminished fifth the devil's interval, whatever you want to call it. That's all that is. We've got the, the major sixth um, of D Dorian here on the B string. And the flat third of D Dorian here on the high E string. And the distance intervallically between those two notes is a flat fifth. Also known as a tritone. The scale run that comes after that is pretty standard blue scale stuff. I end on that note there. Any guesses as to what that note is? It is the seemingly now infamous major sixth that I've said about a million times in this video already. So we're ending that scale run on the major sixth of D Dorian. And from here, I'm gonna build, a, build and develop 
a sort of rhythmic motif. So I'm actually gonna play this major sixth in two higher octaves um, in an interesting motif type way. I have no idea what I was trying to say there, but. So I end on this note, then I do this on the G string, and then I do this on the B string. So again, landing on the major sixth there. And I'm gonna repeat that an octave higher, way up here on the high E string. Okay, so here I'm sort of taking uh, this and using that note to, well, kind of build a motif around it, right? And then to end the lick, I do this. So in this one lick, we've got use of a tritone between the major sixth and the flat third, uh, the flat five from the blues scale, and a motif that's built around highlighting that major sixth of the Dorian mode. That is two licks down so far, and we've got one more to go, but before we get into that, I want to talk about tone. I mentioned at the start of the video that this is sponsored by Neural DSP, who have sponsored a lot of videos on my channel over the past three, four months. And today I am using their brand new Soldano SLO 100 plugin, which I absolutely love the sound of. And so right now I'm just gonna break down the tone that I'm getting in this video and also give you guys some free presets that I'm gonna walk you through in the next segment of the video. These presets will be available to download for free linked in the description box below. So here we have the brand new Soldano SLO 100 plugin from Neural DSP. And I'm gonna take you guys through three different patches that I've set up using this plugin and nothing else. Uh, everything you hear, all of the effects, distortions, reverbs, delays, chorus even, it's all coming from this plugin. And I wanted to create three fairly different sounding patches to show you guys just how versatile a Soldano amp really is. I've actually, uh, I, well, I got to play through a real Soldano, the SLO 30, I believe, at 42 Gear Street last year with uh, in a video with Jack Gardner, which is on my channel, by the way. And when I plugged into this for the first time, I instantly recognized that same tone that I experienced playing through when I got to play through the real Soldano amp. When most guitar players think of Soldano, they think about high gain, like crushing hard rock and metal tones, which this plugin absolutely does brilliantly, but it also does great clean tones and even great bluesy tones as well, which you're gonna hear. But let's start off with the high gain lead tone that I've created. And this is the one that I've been using throughout this video. Here's what it sounds like, and then we'll go through what I'm using on the patch. <laughs> So when you download this patch, which you can do for free via the link in the description box, uh, and you load it up initially, that's gonna have the Overdrive 1 already engaged. It's gonna have some EQ that's rolling off the low end. The mics are gonna be a 57 and a ribbon mic, both set like quite far away and to the, to the edge of the speaker cones. And there's obviously a sort of ping pong delay, which I love, and a reverb, a sort of hall style reverb. So I'm just gonna walk you through each part of that patch. With that overdrive engaged, it sounds very, very saturated, and you can hear that 
when I pal mute certain notes. <laughs> Hear that? Hear how saturated that is? Um, I don't think I had the overdrive on for filming the rest of the video, so let's just turn that off and see um, see what that does. prefer it without the overdrive obviously you know if I wanted a bit more juice I would add it in but particularly the way that it sounds on the neck pickup I think there's just more clarity and definition without it that's without the overdrive with it engaged but then again you get that nice added sustain with that overdrive so I don't know I guess it's situational really for the EQ as you can see I've I've got it set so that I'm rolling off some low end and that's just because with this particular guitar the amp without any EQ it sounds quite boomy like the low end sounds quite overpowering uh, if I if I have that EQ turned off um... <laughs> sound terrible but with it engaged I think with it engaged it would just sit much better in a mix in a full song but that's personal preference and of course it's going to depend on the type of guitar that you are using in your pickups and so on and so forth I already said about the mic placement 57 and a ribbon mic in my in my eyes or in my ears you can't really go wrong with that combination as for delays and reverbs yeah i said i've got a ping pong sort of stereo delay i love this uh, let me turn off the reverb just hear the sound of that delay by itself <laughs> Love that. And let me turn off the delay and just listen to the reverb. So without, it's gonna sound obviously quite dry. With it engaged, I've got it set, I've got the decay set up for a sort of small hall type sound. That's it for my high gain lead patch. Next, we're gonna take a look uh, a much more clean and compressed, funky rhythm style tone. This patch is called Chorus Clean Comp for what I hope are obvious reasons. It's clean, it's got chorus, and it's very compressed. We are using the clean channel of the amp, which actually has two different settings. You've got clean and crunch. We'll get to the crunch setting when I go over my blues crunchy patch. Um, but for now, let's just take a look at what's going on in this particular patch. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I wanna point out something cool about this plugin. You can change the uh, skin on the amp. Right now it's black, now it's purple. Uh, but my personal favorite is snakeskin. Nice and cheesy, love that. Um, so we've got EQ again, rolling off some of the low end just to make it a, a bit less boomy, uh, but that's gonna depend on the type of guitar you're using again, so you might not want it. For the mic selection, again, 57 and a ribbon mic. Positions are a bit different to how I had them set for the high gain tone. For time-based effects, just reverb set with the decay all the way down, so it's just a subtle reverb. It's not too overpowering, just prevents it from sounding too dry. Let's turn that off. Not much more to say about that, really, but let's get to what makes this sound the way it does, and that is Really, the, the compressor is the heart of this patch. Um, I really like the sound 
of this particular compressor that they've got with this plugin. Uh, it's got two different settings, slow and fast. Let's, you've heard the fast one, so let's listen to it slow. I feel like the slow setting's a bit more in your face. Let's listen to fast again. Yeah, I think I prefer it set fast. It's it's a bit less in your face, and but it is still noticeably compressed, so it would sound good in a mix, I think. Uh, the chorus I've got on here, this is optional, really. I mean, you don't have to have this on, but I just think, well, I just wanted to show it off because it's, it's part of the plugin, and if you're going for more of an 80s sound, then why not use chorus? Uh, without it, it sounds like this. <laughs> Let's add it in. Okay, so that's my chorus clean comp patch. Now we're going to take a listen to a patch called Modern Blues Vibes. So this is my modern blues vibes patch and in this one I'm using the clean channel on the crunch setting which we haven't heard so far um, so that just sounds like this and I am using a delay and reverb as well the delay is just set for 125 millisecond one repeat so it's like a slap pack Hear that, just one repeat. And the reverb, as you can hear, I've got the decay set quite low. It's only a quarter of the way up, but the mix is quite high, uh, which I like to do for, if I'm going for like a vintage blue sound, I like quite an overpowering reverb. Because when you really dig in, you get more out of that reverb. quite dynamic in a way and in terms of EQ I'm not actually using any EQ for this patch I don't feel like it needs it the mic placement the mic selection same as the others 57 on one and a ribbon mic on the other speaker and if you want to boost things a bit you can add in this overdrive one which I'll do sometimes to get more of a, uh, a boosted bluesy lead tone so without it <laughs> With it engaged. It's not it's not overpowering, it's not too much saturation. But it is quite nice if you want a more of a boosted lead sound. I play that like in every single YouTube video. I need to shed more clearly, but that's my uh, that's my modern blues vibes patch. Again, you can download that along with the two others in the description box below, and you can also find a link to this plugin on the Neural DSP website if you want to find out more about it on their site you can do that and download my patches as well it goes to show you guys that like uh, a soldano amp is really quite a versatile tool for a guitar player you know uh, before i actually got to try one out in person i thought they were all about high gain tones which they do beautifully but 
this plugin just goes to show you can get great clean sound and great clean sounds and great crunch tones as well. So shout out to Neural DSP for sponsoring another video on the channel. I hope you enjoyed these tones as much as I enjoyed playing with them. Let's get back to the lesson. Okay, and the final Dorian lick in today's video goes like this. We're starting out low for this one. Now, when I'm improvising, even with modes, 90% of what I visualize is, is pentatonic scales that work with the mode. So in this case, it's the minor pentatonic, right? So I'm kind of viewing this as position three of the minor pentatonic. But I am, of course, aware of the surrounding notes from D Dorian that I can throw in there. One of those notes is of course the major sixth, which actually starts the lick. We slide into that major sixth and then I play a, a scale run that's very much Dorian scale based and that might sound like an obvious thing to say. But what I mean by that is that I'm not visualizing anything other than the notes of the scale. I'm not thinking about like a triad pair or an arpeggio or anything like that. I'm just thinking Dorian scale, notes of the Dorian scale. So that goes like this. Now, the second half of this lick starts out with a minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. So those first four notes, they make up a B minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. Now, minor 7 flat 5 arpeggios, or half diminished arpeggios, are another creative tool found within the Dorian mode that you can exploit in your solos and in your improvisations. And what you need to remember about using this arpeggio when you're playing in different keys, other than D, which is what we're playing in today, is that the arpeggio is built from the major sixth of the Dorian mode. So in this key, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth note is the note B. So I know that from that note, I can build a minor seven flat five arpeggio. Now, if your fretboard visualization needs a bit of work and you're not confident at finding that arpeggio within Dorian all over the fretboard just yet, another helpful tip that I have for you is that the major sixth is found three frets below the root of the scale when looped at on one string, right? So we're in the key of D, this is the root note here. Three frets below that is the note B, which is the major sixth of D Dorian. So just remember that when you're playing in different keys and on different strings, if you can see a root note, know that three frets below it is the major sixth. And from there you can build a minor seven flat five arpeggio. So coming out of that, I, I just played it there, but coming out of that minor seven flat five arpeggio, I pick the note C, and then I do a sort of chromatic walk up to the major sixth, which goes like this. Okay, now this note at fret three is a flat six, which we know is not part of D Dorian, but I'm making it work in this context because I'm not leaning on that note. I'm not going which would sound quite ugly over the backing track. I'm just making a quick pit stop at that note as a means of getting to that major sixth in a creative way. And that's just an example of breaking the, you know, the perceived rules of music theory. But guys, remember that music theory is a language. It's not a rule book. Okay, so we come out of that arpeggio, play the chromatic walk-up thing, and end like so. So 
So mostly liner pen and tonic for the end there. So there you have it guys, three Dorian licks that you can practice using in your improvisation and in your solos. Now I really hope that this video was helpful for opening your eyes to new possibilities for improvising with modes like the Dorian mode. Because when I started playing modes initially, um, I struggled to make them sound musical. It was all about three note per string shred patterns. That's 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 all I thought you could do with modes when I first started learning them as a player back in the day. And there's nothing wrong with you know three note per string shred patterns if that's what you're into, but just know that there are other melodic devices and creative things you can do within these modes. And that's why I made a point of highlighting things like the major triad pair. Remember, you've got a pair of major triads within Dorian built from the third and fourth scale degrees and they're a tone apart. So that's something you can use in your, in your improvisations. We also had the, uh, I was of course talking about that major sixth interval, which you absolutely want to make a point of highlighting when you're soloing in Dorian. We also had the minor seven flat five arpeggio built from that major sixth, combining Dorian with the minor pentatonic and blues scales. So that just goes to show there's a lot of fun to be had with the Dorian mode. And like I mentioned at the start of the video for subscribers of my website, linked in the description box below, uh, you guys have instant access to five bonus lick lessons based on this video. I'm playing over the same backing track. I've got five Dorian licks with downloadable PDF and Guitar Pro tab files, as well as all the tab files for what you heard in this video. If you wanna get started learning about music theory for guitar, uh, you can sign up to my website in the description box below if you're not already. You can choose to subscribe on a monthly or annual basis to stream all of the videos, or you can opt to purchase parts one and two of my courses individually for offline access as well. The choice is yours, or you can do both. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please do me a favor, click the like button, share this with your guitar playing friends and click subscribe for more in the future. Thanks again to Neural DSP for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys in the next one.